So uh, welcome everyone to our webinar today, to the second instalment of our webinar series, Resilience, Rethinking Communities in a Post-COVID World. Uh, if you're coming back after last week, great to have you with us again. And if you're newly joining, delighted to have you here and we hope you'll be returning. So our host today is Connell Casey, who will be discussing optimizing the design of crutches. Connell is a third year product design student at the National College of Art and Design in Dublin. And he has a keen interest in iterative designing, 3D printing and um, CAD modeling. So last year, Connell won an innovation award in, our, in EWB Ireland's design competition, where there is no engineer. And he started an internship with us in March this year as the world radically changed. So he has been working from home, developing the crutch kit design and working on prototyping. And he's doing this in partnership with Field Ready. Field Ready are a global organization. Uh, we're partnered with them for this project in Nepal, um, who innovate manufacturing and logistics for humanitarian aid. So the aim is that um, Field Ready Nepal are going to be assisting with testing and prototyping with a view to producing the crutch kit for use in Nepal and hopefully in other global locations that they have. Uh, so I will pass you over now to Connell, who's going to share the story of the crutch kit and its use and benefit for uh, remote and vulnerable communities in particular, uh, like refugee camps and in post-disaster zones. Uh, so just to mention, we will have time for a Q&A at the end of the session. So if you have a question, if one occurs to you during the webinar, feel free to write it in the Q&A box and we will come to it at the end of the session. Okay, thanks very much, guys. Connell, over to you. Okay, great stuff. Uh, right, I'll jump right into it. So crutches, how to optimize an essential item. Uh, yeah, so like Emma was saying, I'm a third year product design student in NCAD. Uh, I got involved with Engineers Without Borders through um, their competition, the Where Is There, Where There Is No Engineer competition last year. And I've been working with them um, uh, doing my internship since about mid-March. Um, and again, yeah, we're in partnership with Field Ready, who uh, I was going to be going over to Nepal for about five to six weeks. But obviously, um, without being able to travel, that is postponed at the moment, unfortunately. Um, yeah, so what is Crutchkit? Crutchkit is a product slash, slash system that's designed to provide simple, cheap, and adaptable crutches to, to those without access to them. Crutchkit is especially applicable for refugee and migrant camps, not only for refugee and migrant camps, but uh, especially applicable. Uh, Crutchkit is a product optimized for simple production and assembly. Uh, so that's the reason I kind of say system, product slash system because it's thinking right back to manufacture to material selection to try and optimize the crutch um, for its environment as best we can so uh, in its entirety it's uh, foam padding uh, an injection molded handle uh, the foot of the crutch and an aluminium body so in total we're looking at four components uh, in comparison to your uh, sort of run-of-the-mill crutch, which can be upwards of 15 components sometimes. So yeah, the foam padding and the foot of the crutch, these are two components that can be bought. There's really not a lot of work for me to do there. Uh, they can be bought in bulk, and they're cheap, and they're available. The work really is in the injection molded handle and in the aluminium body of the crutch, more so the injection molded handle. Um, yeah, so just in terms of the work I've been doing, uh, larger chunk of my work since March has been trying to figure out the handle. Um, but more recently, it's been figuring out the frame of the crutch. And just for uh, context, because I know it can be confusing sometimes, that's the front of the crutch. Um, sometimes you mix it up. So why do we need to redesign the crutch? Um, mainly because they're an essential medical device um, and therefore the most vulnerable, vulnerable population of a ref refugee or migrant camp. Um, the sick, injured, or disabled. Um, they're a general product being applied to a specific situation. Um, so by redesigning the product for its environment, we can provide more, which is essentially what it comes down to in this project is what can I do? How can I make it cheaper? What can I change manufacturer-wise or make it more adaptable? I'll try to get down to more crutches, essentially. So how it works. Uh, is a single injection molded component that clicks into place and I have a video demo if I can just grab it now
So just grabbing the video. There we go. See that okay? Yeah. So it slides on the top and snaps down into place. And yeah, there's another angle here, I think. And I'll show it in a second. Yeah. So there's a ring around the top and the bottom is like a clip and it clips into place. Okay. And now for the aluminium body of the crutch, um, the way this works is it's bent into place using a pipe bender. So a pipe bender is a pretty standard piece of uh, plumbing equipment. This is a fancier version. So this one looks a lot like the one we have in the workshop in NCAD. Stick the pipe in, you pull the handle down, and you can bend the pole around to the radius that you need. This is the one I have down in my shed. It's about 100 euro. Uh, again, you stick the pipe in, and you pull it around to the, to the proper radius. A lot of my prototyping for the frame has been using copper piping, just because it was more available to me. But I have tested on um, the actual medical grade aluminium extrusions that you'd use. And they're harder to bend around in this, but they're uh, still very, very doable in, uh, in a bit of equipment that costs less than 100 euro. Um, sizing wise, I get a lot of questions about this. Again, um, if, you're, if, if they're just a standardized piece of equipment, you have to have a small, medium, and large. You have to manufacture those. Whereas I've simplified sizing down to just cutting off the end of the crutch. Uh, with a pipe cutter. So a pipe cutter costs less than 10 euro. And again, it's a standard piece of plumbing equipment. You stick it on the end and you run it round and there's a small disc blade that'll cut off um, the end really nicely. It's really quick. So how this would work would be, you'd be uh, getting your crutch prescribed to you. The physio or the doctor would hold it up against you and decide, okay, maybe we need to take three inches off the end to get it to the right size. And they just cut off the end and stick the foot of the crutch back on. It's moving sort of all, all the components you'd need to achieve something like that in the factory. Um, like the whole um, adjustable, um, all, all the components you need to put into making the crutch adjustable. I'm simplifying that down to a simple pipe cutter, just cut off the end and make it a bit easier. Uh, so the manufacturer process four in the PAL. Um, what I'm proposing is to inject injection mold, the handle in Bangladesh or Nepal. So dependent on the complexity of the mold, uh, Bangladesh, um, they have the means to do more complicated molds there. So if my mold needs a slide, say, um, it would probably need to be molded in Bangladesh. But if it was to just be a, a simple two-piece mold, they have the ability to do that in Nepal. Um, so that's to be figured out because we're still sort of mid-process figuring that out. Um, and then that again goes straight to assembly on site. Uh, again, the foot of the crutch and the foam padding are two things that can just be bought. There's not a lot of work that needs to be done there. They're shipped straight to on site. For the aluminium extrusions, we have two options. One option, uh, number one there, I got from talking to Stuart Garrett, who's a senior physio in um, St. James's Hospital. Um, when he was volunteering in a field hospital, he was um, having there, there was a, a carpentry, uh, carpenters next door who would make the crutches. Um, and then they'd be made uh, in to, to the size of the person. The other option, number two, is to have the extrusions manufactured in Kathmandu. So we can either have them um, made sort of on site, or we can outsource that to uh, somewhere in Kathmandu where. Um, pipe bending and that sort of thing is, is pretty standard manufacturing. Um, so why is this any better than our current system? One, it's cheaper, that's the big one. Um, manufacturer is simplified to one injection mold and bending a pipe, only four components. Sizing is universal, so we're not manufacturing a small, medium or large, it's just the one, one product. Um, stock extrusions are cheap and injection mold becomes cost effective over time. Um, it's all manufactured close or in Nepal. So supply and distribution, trying to keep everything closer together will be easier. Um, it's simple and adaptable. So the handle allows for easy adjustments because, it, because, because it clicks on in one piece, the patient can uh, uh, adjust it themselves um, if need be. Um, it can be, yeah, it can be fitted quickly and easily. Um, and I can also uh, 
very easily be a walking stick, which is something I haven't looked into too much. But uh, just take a pole and you click on the handle, you have a walking stick pretty easily and you don't even need to bend it. So that option is there. Uh, materials are easy to source. So stock aluminium extrusions are widely available. Foam for the padding is cheap and available and crutch feet can be bought in bulk. Yeah, so a bit about my prototyping process and how I got to this point. Um, I explored six distinctly different concepts for the handle and I made multiple physical prototypes for each before deciding on the click-on version of the handle. Uh, so yeah, I'm now in the process of iterating this design down until we have a final prototype. Uh, this I made up just to visualize um, sort of the prototyping process for me. I'd like to be quite hands-on. So that first bit there, these dots are the six sort of different directions I went. And I made one or two physical prototypes for each of those, which I'll show you now before deciding on the click on version. Um, and then I went really, really wide again in the iteration of the click on version. I've made lots and lots of models. Uh, this was the prototyping from last year. I was welding and learning how to silicone mold. Um, uh, most of these ideas didn't work out. So out of the six, I only went one. Um, but I'm just going to show you a bit of them. This was. Um, an overmold version. I was trying to mold over an existing bit of pipe and get around the complexity of having a mold, having an injection mold that slides by making the handle solid. So rather than the, the uh, pipe going into the handle, I wanted to try to put the handle into the pipe. Um, that ended up not working out. It was quite weak. Uh, this was along the same lines again, sort of imagining more what it would be like um, as an injection molded component. So keeping the wall thickness the same all the way around. Again, that was way too weak. This was, again, trying to get around the complexity of an injection mold. Um, I think it may be if, if the back of it was a hinge, it could fold around the pipe and then be tightened on. Just, again, too complex and too weak. This was trying to skip out an injection mold entirely and just use the pipe bender, bend a bit of pipe 90 degrees and use hose clamps to attach it onto the pole. Um, the, the sort of radius that you can get on the pipe bender is just far too big. So you can see my hand is way too far away from the pole. And the hose clamps in that configuration actually turned out to be quite weak. So uh, we didn't go with that one. This one um, uh, is basically, if you can see down in the left corner here, I use a hose clamp and I do a resin mold um, around the hose clamp. So the hose clamp would be actually running up into the handle. Um, and then you tighten that down onto the pole. That turned out to be really strong, actually. Um, but that's two components. It's a little bit more um, sort of homemade looking. Um, I'm not entirely given up on this idea because um, for, say, if you need crutches for more of an emergency situation, um, having something with a hose clamp that can actually uh, attached to like a range of different diameters of pole uh, might actually be useful. So um, I've uh, uh, sort of stopped it for now, but I'm keeping it in mind. Um, so now what I'm going to show you is the, the process for the um, click on version, the one I've decided to go with. I've made, I think I've printed out on my 3D printer 15 or 16 versions. Um, and I'm going to be starting into CNC uh, milling them, uh, hopefully this week, maybe next week. Yeah, so lots and lots and lots of iteration of this handle. Um, I would 3D print it with no infill, so nothing on the inside. And then I'd fill it up with resin. You can see down in the left corner there, I'd fill it up with resin. Um, still quite weak, kind of hard to um, imagine what an injection molded piece would be like without actually having an injection mold. So hopefully the CNC milling will give me a, a bit of a better idea. Um, yeah, so lots and lots of versions of these. Um, tested out lots and lots of different shapes. What I sort of landed on was the last one you can see here. Um, how this one works is uh, that's the this half, the, the bottom half is filled up with a urethane resin. So it's a bit more flexible. So that's why it clips on. And then the, the length of the handle is just filled up with um, a normal epoxy resin, which just gives it a bit of strength. And this one I haven't actually been able to break. My, it'll take my weight, no problem. Um, I actually experimented a bit with putting a little bit of sandpaper in the back of the top. 
um, to increase friction because my design is just trying to uh, create as much friction as possible so the handle isn't moving anywhere. Um, that helped quite a bit. This is uh, just a visual, vis visualization of um, sort of the iteration process. Um, right now I'm on number nine. Uh, so number nine is what I'm gonna be taking to the CNC and uh, milling it out hopefully uh, in a few days when the plastic arrives so, or starting next week. So yeah, next steps, like I say, and I'm gonna machine the final prototype handle. Uh, I'm gonna iterate the extrusions further to determine the final shape. Um, and then after that will be strength and usability testing. Uh, so yeah, thank you, that's it, that's it for me. Um, so any questions, I'm welcome, you're, or um, I will answer them, no problem. Thanks very much for that, Colin. Um, it's really interesting. I'm sure everyone really enjoyed that. So uh, yeah, if there are any um, questions, guys, um, we'll give it a few minutes and feel free to write them in the Q&A box or the chat one and we'll, we'll take them from there. That's probably a lot of a uh, lot of information for the guys to process this stuff. I think they're okay. We should we got. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, just to, to mention in the meantime as well, um the innovation award that uh, Connell won last year as part of our competition. We have that every year for our competition participants. Um, so we have overall winner and innovation then winners and the innovation winners um, get to take their product design, uh, system design forward as Connell said, and uh, they get funding then to develop the idea and the concept in an uh, internship with us. So just to mention that. Uh, okay, we have a question here from uh, Michaela, who says, uh, you say it will be cut to the size, but could it be reused by someone else after that? Um, yeah, that depends on if you're going up or down the sizes. So the downside of that is if a tall person wants to give their crutch to a smaller person, that's doable because you just cut a bit more off the end. So it does work that way, but it's not going to work the other way. You can't reattach. Uh, but again, the 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 pipe is, is really, really cheap because you're, you're not buying it processed, you're doing the processing yourself. So you're just buying the extrusion, uh, an aluminium extrusion straight out of the factory. So it's, it's quite cheap. Thanks, Carl. Uh, we've one here from Dan then, um, who asked, how long have you been working on this idea? Um, on and off since, so I did uh, in the competition, it was probably about four or five weeks of work. Um, then over the summer, I did it in sort of bits, bits and parts. Um, and then since mid-March, I've been doing it um, sort of as my main focus with the internship. So yeah, so that's the, the evolution. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Uh, we have one more here from, uh, from Liam. Uh, can we use this design component for stretchers or other devices? Yeah, so um, as I mentioned with the walking stick, there's um, when you're when you're buying stuff in sort of stock form, there's there's a level of adaptability there. Um, there's sort of an option there to to make this a stretcher. So I, I didn't show it there because it's not it's not an idea that's totally figured out yet, and um, the injection mold would kind of be complicated further to achieve it. But if you imagine two handles here and a and the straight pipes going down here to the side. Um, you can make a stretcher uh, as long as the handles are hollow. But for the handles to be hollow, you need to add a slide in the injection mold, which adds cost and which adds complexity. Um, but, it, but it is an option as well as the, the, um, the walking stick configuration. Great, thank you. Uh, we have one more here um, from Michaela again. So she says, um, if the pipe is really cheap, um, could you use T two pipes, one on the inside for adjusting the size. You you could do, but um, the components, the amount of components needed to make that, um, the if you're talking about like on a normal crutch, the way there's the holes down the side and you pull down the crutch to adjust it with the little pins, um, you have to account for 
sort of the manufacturer that goes into that. So all those holes need to be drilled and sanded down. Um, and you need to you need to source those little pins to go on the inside. Um, this sort of this project's more about not not last resort crutches, but um, we're we're optimizing it for the, for the situation. So um, if it's made per person, you don't really need that adjustment there because it'll be sized to you by the physio. So um, the only reason you'd really need to change the height after that is to be giving it to another person. And again, like I say, and that works by going down in height, it doesn't work by going, by going up in height, which is which is the downside, I'm, I'm aware. Just one um, final follow-up point then from Michaela. She says, from an economical point of view, um, it could be cheap, but um, could it not be re, but if it could not be reused, is the environmental price high? Um, yeah. Yeah. I read that actually, um, yeah. <laughs> um, not something I've um, looked into really deeply. I've not looked into sort of the environmental impact. Um, but um, yeah, so if, if somebody uses it and they're finished using it, um, they can give it back um, and then it can be used to go down a size and not up a size, which I'm aware is 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 a downside. But again, this is not not exactly last resort, but sort of close to last resort. Trying to bring if 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 we can bring down the price enough that it it, it does make sense. Um, I think that makes sense in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Great. That's it. Thanks, Colin. Um. Yep, just one comment here from Finbar who says, uh, well done on the design. Having just finished a month on crutches, it looks very practical. So there is some solid feedback from a recent Thank user of crutches. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, I mean, that's the, the great thing about this is that actually so many people do have, you know, the experience and can relate to yeah. it. Or it's certainly something that so many of us, it could happen to us at any stage in our life, you know, and possibly in a context where we could use this. So um, yeah. yeah, very interesting for us all from that, from that perspective. Um, one question here from Derek, uh, can the handle be reused? Uh, yeah, uh, as long as the, the handle relies on the extrusion being uh, the same diameter, so you need to buy the same diameter of aluminium tubing. Um, but again, it just clicks on and off. So if you want to use it, um, if I don't know if you damage your crutch or if it breaks, um, you can just click that off really easily and attach it to a new one if it needs be. Great, yeah, exactly. So it's super diverse and flexible, yeah, the, yep. um, the uses of it. Brilliant, do we, uh, do we have any last questions there, guys, um, before we finish up? I think, I think that might be it. I don't see any, any more coming through. Um, so just a, a huge thanks again to Connell for presenting today on such an interesting and innovative design. And uh, if you're interested in, um, in keeping up to date on the progress, um, you can always feel free to, to drop us um, drop us a line here at EWB. Uh, I think Connell as well does have an Instagram uh, account uh, that he may be yeah, sharing, yeah. <laughs> sharing pictures on as well, so you can follow him there. Um, and yeah, so thank you very much for joining. And just to mention that next week, we will have um, Declan Olcock, who is one of the directors of EWB Ireland um, and project director at um, um, engineering <laughs> consultancy, sorry, the name escapes me, that's quite bad. Uh, anyway, and he, uh, he'll be talking about um, green building uh, people and planet. Uh, so that's, that will be our theme for next week. So yeah, please do join us again uh, next Wednesday at 1.30 uh, for that, if you're interested. Okay, so final big thanks to Connell and uh, have a good afternoon, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.